Hi, Daisy. Do you have a minute? Hi. Well, I'm at work now. Is it urgent? I've heard this rumor and I wanted to get it off my chest and ask you. Have you started seeing someone? Um, I try to hide it because I didn't want to hurt you. But now, you have found out there's no point in denying it. Yes, I've started dating someone. His name is Jake. Why didn't you tell me right away? I think you should be sensitive about these things after what happened. I know this is a sensitive topic for you. That's why I avoided bringing it up. But I had my mourning period. I suffered a lot after Danny's passing. I deserve to move on. Do you think that's what my son would have wanted? He loved you so much, Daisy. I loved him too. He was the only person I ever loved so deeply. The accident was soul crashing and neither of us was prepared to lose Daniel. But I know him very well and he'd wish for us to go on with our lives. A mother can't go on in a world where her son is buried. How long have you been dating this Jake? Not that long. You don't have to be afraid. I will never forget Danny. And we're a family now, just like you wanted it. I don't think it's appropriate for you to go on a date so soon. You are a beautiful and smart woman. I understand why men show interest in you, but don't let yourself be fooled. Some are just after your money. Maybe this Jake character is too. I can assure you that's not the case. Anyway, I have to get back to work now. Talk to you more at dinner. Daisy, I'm sorry to disturb you again when you're at work, but I have to tell you something. Don't worry, I'm on my lunch break now. What's the matter? I want to apologize for my behavior yesterday. I shouldn't have accused you of moving on. It's only natural. Thank you. I know how gloomy grief can be. That's why I wanted to protect you all this time. I'll still be there for you even if I have a new boyfriend. Yes. I appreciate all the help you gave us this past year. But like you said, I think it's time we move on. What do you mean? I need you to move out ASAP. My daughter is moving back in with me, and it would be too crowded for all of us in that small house. I'm sure you can understand. Wow, what are you saying? You're kicking me out? Not kick you out. I'm asking you to find a new place to move. Emily is coming from Europe tomorrow and needs a place to stay. I can't say no to my own daughter, can I? Have you forgotten all that I've done for you? The bills, the maintenance of the house, and the mortgage I paid for without ever asking you for a dime? You can't kick me out of that house. You're talking nonsense. Of course I can. It's my son's house after all. It was your choice to come and live with us after he died. And I let you because I felt sorry for you. But now you said you moved on. So go live your happy life elsewhere. I can't believe how ungrateful you are. You pitied me? I felt sorry for you because you had no money to support yourself. So I help you with everything you ask me. I even hired a team to repaint the whole house because you didn't like the green shade it had. If I knew you were going to throw all of that help back into my face, I wouldn't have asked you. Clearly you didn't do it out of the goodness of your heart. You sound insane. Think before you speak, will ya? You don't want to say something you'll regret later. I won't regret it. Truth is, you're nobody in this family. As soon as my daughter comes back, we'll be on track with our expenses. And you can leave. Oh, so you were just using me for my money? Your affectionate mother-in-law attitude was just an act? When you were deserving, I showed you my good side. But you're getting on my nerves. So don't expect me to be diplomatic. <laughs> you were never diplomatic. You just wore a mask all along. Never mind. I'm not moving out. The towels legally belongs to me. What do you mean? Hey babe, can I sleep over at your place tonight? Hey honey, you don't need to ask. You know you're always welcome here. How was your big day? Did the presentation go well? Not too well. I got distracted by a conversation I had earlier with my mother-in-law. She was upset about the fact that I'm dating you and went on and on about how disgraceful it is for a widow to find a partner so soon. But 
It's been a year since. And then today, she told me to leave the house because her stupid daughter is coming back. That sounds like a show. How come you decided to tell her about us? I thought you wanted to keep it a secret for now. It's not me who told her. She found out on her own. Gossip was going around. She said, nothing's private anymore these days. She might have seen an Instagram story of us together? Don't think so. She only uses Facebook. It doesn't matter anymore. I need to find a way to tell her that Danny left the house to me, and I needed to start a new family. Any ideas? I don't suppose meeting me would do any good, seeing that you have a steady relationship with a down-to-earth man. That might help, actually. She thinks you are after my money, like I wouldn't know when someone is taking advantage of me. Let me sleep on the idea. My mind is all over the place right now. I think that's for the best. You had a long day. I'm making dinner for us right now. See you soon. Hey, I assume mom told you to move out. Why didn't you come pack your bags last night? Do you think this is a joke? Anyway, I handled it for you. I threw all your stuff out. If you come by now, you can still find them lying by the roadside. You did what? Just who do you think you are? You ditched your family when they needed you most and left them without the means to support themselves. It was me who helped them all this time. You were MIA. If you dare touch my stuff, I'll report you to the police. Listen, my brother's house is my family's property. Unlike you, my mother and I are part of that family. You no longer have rights to the house. And we no longer need your help either. I have loads of money and I got myself the best job ever. My position as a marketing executive earns me more than I care to count. You should just walk off. You and your mom, you're both mind-blowingly selfish. You got some nerve to come rubbing my job into my face after I paid all the bills and the mortgage of the house? Can you stop complaining already? Just follow the facts. I'm moving in, you're moving out. Where were you all this time? You didn't care to check on your family after Danny's passing? Not once. It's none of your business. Besides, you were not that big of a help to my family. Mom had to do the maintenance of the house and yard all by herself. She told me how you'd come home late at night and not do any house chores. Well, someone has to make the money that goes towards maintenance cost, right? Your father's pension is a fraction of what they need to survive. She can't expect me to do the cleaning and to grow grocery shopping when I work six days out of seven. It's the least she could do. People are not your servants. You treat mom like one, but it's the end of it. I did not. I respect your mother and always help with cooking and other tasks when I'm at home, which is more than you ever did for your family. Oh, please. Making an omelet doesn't count as house chores. Anyway, we don't need your penny muddy anymore, so come get your stuff and leave us alone. The house doesn't belong to you. Danny let your parents stay there because they had nowhere else to go. He had such a big heart. Unlike you. What do you mean it doesn't belong to us? It's under my brother's name. You got that right. But you don't know the full story. I'm going to explain it all to you this evening. What are you talking about? Tell me now. Some of us have real jobs to do. Bye. You actually threw my stuff out? How dare you do that after all I've done for you? My clothes and shoes are thrown everywhere. You didn't even bother to put them properly in my suitcases. It wasn't me. Emily took the initiative. She needed space to arrange her own things now that she's moved in with me. And you let her just like that? You know, I could have you reported for unacceptable behavior. The only thing that's keeping me is the fact that you're Daniel's mother. Don't be so dramatic, Chrissy. All your stuff is out there in the front yard. I told you to come pick your stuff, but you didn't come last night. Emily arrived early in the morning and started unpacking. I can't believe I wanted to take you out and introduce you to Jake. I can't believe you thought I wanted to meet him. Keep your new lovebird to yourself and definitely don't bring him to the house. I've had enough. You need to move out of my house. This is our house. You have no right over it. You're wrong. When we got married, Danny put me as the co-owner of the house. And in case one of us died, the house belonged entirely to the other. So technically, this house is now under my name. 
and I can kick you out, not the other way around. Danny never told me about this. You're lying. He wouldn't leave the house to a woman he just met. I was his wife, not just any woman. The house is my property and I have the documents to prove it. But I am not a witch, so I won't throw you on the streets right now. I give you three days to pack everything and move. It shouldn't take you that long since I bought most of the things in the house. Why can't you just leave us alone? Do you think Danny would want us wrestling over this house? It's a teddy house. I'm sure the mortgage is not even that high. How can you talk about mortgage payment when you don't earn anything? You know, there are all kinds of casual jobs you could do. Post office clerk, vendor, why don't you try to make your own money for once? A woman my age can do better than a shitty clerk position. But I don't need to because my daughter supports me and she doesn't ask for anything in return like you did. I ask you the bare minimum and you still complain. Typical of you, but it doesn't matter. Pack your stuff and leave ASAP. I'll come back to check that the house is empty on Friday. You wish. I'm sorry. We didn't have time to plan our wedding with everything that's been going on. Don't worry about it. After the house problem is solved, we'll have enough time for the wedding prep. You're right. I want this whole situation to be over. It's stressing me out. In the meantime, should I have my sister check out a couple of venues for us? No, I don't want sisters getting involved in my business anymore. Babe, you do realize my sister is nothing like your sister-in-law, right? I know, but I'd rather check the venues myself, okay? Fine. I'm going to check up on the house tomorrow after work. Claire and Emily should have left by then. I'm not sure they took you seriously. Should I come with you? No, I can handle them. I have the supporting documents too. When they see Danny's signature, they'll have to leave. Why won't you accept help from anyone? You're not yourself these days. This situation with Emily is wearing me out. Please don't make it worse. She vanished for a year and now she appears suddenly with a lot of money in her accounts. Doesn't add up. And where did she come up with this marketing job? Well, if a person has a lot of experience in a similar position, they can jump straight into the executive role. We just hired someone who worked for luxury brands in Europe. Wait, this person worked in Europe and recently became your executive? This sounds like Emily, but it can't be, right? I have a subordinate overseeing her. I didn't meet her personally. Let me check and get back to you. Babe, I have the information. The new executive's name is Emily Sanders. I can't believe it. Let me see. Oh my God, it is her, Daniel's sister. But she never even worked in marketing. I remember Danny told me she was a job hopper, never keeping a job for more than a few months. If she lied in her resume and to the HR team, we have to fire her right away. You'd better do that. She's a manipulative person. We're having a cocktail party tonight with clients from the fashion industry. I'll talk with her and try to find out more before laying her off. I'm right outside the house. Have you left the keys in the mailbox? You have some nerve to come back here, you sneaky liar. What are you babbling about? My boss tried to fire me yesterday after his boss told him I faked my resume. Of course, I convinced him not to. Get to the point! Then I found out that the big boss is engaged to no other than you! The girl who was supposed to be mourning my dead brother. Daniel would be very happy to see that I found someone new. Obviously, you don't know your brother at all, because you spent most of your time hooking up with men and hopping from one shitty job to another. At least I'm not a liar. You told my mom you just started seeing this man, and now she learns that you are in fact engaged? You should be ashamed of yourself. I only told her that because I didn't want to hurt her, but I have nothing to feel ashamed of. On the other hand, you should feel more than sorry for what you did. What are you talking about? I know your secret. I finally understand why you ran off to Europe for a whole year. You're unbelievable. You're hallucinating. There's no secret. I went to Europe for work. Yeah, sure. If you want to call it that, Claire is blind not to see how wicked you are. Shut up, Daisy. 
You're just jealous because I have more money than you and I can support my family. They don't need you anymore. Oh, really? And what will happen now that you're jobless? I just told you I haven't been fired. Don't worry. My fiancé will take care of that. But I'm wondering what I should do about this new information I have on you. What information? Hello? Claire, I talk with a broker charged with Danny's properties. So? Why are you bothering me with this? It turns out your daughter ran away with Daniel Shares profit after the funeral. That's why she's been MIA doing God knows what in Europe. And that's why you were left without any money. Danny intended for those shares to be yours, and you could have made a fortune if Emily hadn't stolen them from you. You're talking nonsense. Why should I believe you? You lied to me in the face about Jake and how you barely knew him. But you are damn engaged to the man. That's a whole different subject. It's not, really. Please, focus. We have an urgent problem at hand. Did you receive any notification about an existing share account in your name? There was a letter I received a few months after the funeral, but I thought it was a scam and ignored it. Do you still have it? I can't remember. I might have thrown it away. This is really important. Can you search for it? I can, but I'm not sure I want to. It's curious how you got interested in Daniel's shares all of a sudden. I'm doing this for your own benefit. I don't want any money from his shares. Stop being so ungrateful. Don't talk to me like I'm some spoiled child. And stop harassing me. Emily would never do such a thing. I raised her better than that. Did you? From where I'm standing, she seems like a reckless teenager trapped in an adult's body. Don't patronize my daughter like you're some kind of saint. Can't you see how evil she is? And rest assured, she will run away again as soon as things go sideways. The brokers will seize her shares and she'll be poor again, who will pay the mortgage, the house maintenance, and your day-to-day -day costs. She wouldn't ditch me again. Besides, she has a good paying job now. Not anymore. She lied in her resume. So, Jake kicked her out. Jake? What does he have to do with all this? She worked for his company, but as soon as she started talking about how she deceived Daniel's broker, she was laid off. I can't believe you would put your sister-in-law in such a horrible position. You are the evil one. You're so obsessed with this house that you're making things up about my daughter but I won't fall for it. Fine, have it your way, but don't come back crawling to me. What did you do to my daughter? Only what she deserved. She's all tense, throbbing back and forth around the house and staring at her phone. No wonder, by now, all her shares should be annulled. So she basically poor and she will be summoned to court soon. This has gotten out of hand. I can't believe you would do that to your husband's sister. She stole all the money Daniel had left you and you're still siding with her? There's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with putting your family first. But you would never understand that. Because you were never really a part of this family. Your daughter had betrayed you while I helped you and paid your cost. Yet you preferred to cast me away as if I was nobody. I'm warning you. I'll come with my lawyer and the police to evict you. Don't be silly. You wouldn't throw your mother-in-law on the street, would you? After you and Emily repeatedly lash out at me, I'll have no regrets about kicking you out of my house. Chrissy, you can't do that. For God's sake, you can't leave us homeless. Oh, so now you ask for my pity? After you called me a liar and told me to leave you alone? I'm not asking for your pity, but don't you have common sense? The broker sees the shares and will barely have money for next month's bills. I don't care anymore, Claire. I wanted to restore the shared money to you, but you refused to deal with the consequences. I'm asking you one last time, gather your stuff and leave. And where are we supposed to go? Our relatives live hundreds of miles away. You know that. Hmm. Considering your budget, I don't think you can afford even a studio on the outskirts of the city. Maybe you will get lucky and find a relic and furnished apartment. You're the worst. Babe, are you sure you want to do this? 100%. I'm sick of Emily and Claire ruining our plans with the house. But Emily might be doing a couple of years in prison. 
Are you sure you want that in your consciousness? Maybe that time spent in a cell will teach her that stealing, lying, and faking documents is wrong. It's not my place to say this, but what would Daniel think? He'd want me to do the right thing. This way the house will be ours to live in. Okay. Meet you in front of the house at 6? Yes. I'll go pick up the guy who will replace the locks and then head to the house. You won't believe what happened last night. Are you okay? Did Emily come back? No, but she hired some teenage punk to vandalize our house. He broke two windows and the plant pots, destroyed the lawn and graffitied swear words on the house. You're serious? And Emily hired him? I wouldn't joke about something like this. One of the windows was that of my bedroom, so I jumped up and ran outside just in time to catch the vandalizer. I called the police and they interrogated him at the station. He told the police it was a tall, brunette woman in her late 20s that made him do it. Yeah, that sounds like her. There's no doubt. Stealing Danny's shares, deceiving his broker, and now vandalizing my house? She's in real trouble. Don't you want to come and live with me until things with the house are settled? No, I can't let her win. It's not about winning. It's about your mental health. You've had all kinds of stress on you lately. You need to relax a bit. Let me take you out for dinner tonight. Okay, should we go to the Mexican restaurant? Good idea. I'll pick you up at 8. See you then. You've reached the bottom, Emily. You're despicable. How could you use that teenage boy for your revenge plan? I didn't use him. I paid him to do it. Wow, you still have some cash left around. <laughs> so sad. You won't be able to sleep in that house anytime soon. It's not that hard to have a couple of windows replaced. You just accelerated my renovation plans. Tell me about your new place. Is it as gloomy and scanty as I imagine? It's none of your business. But don't think you can rob me of my house and job and get away with it. You were already on track with losing this Sphinx. I won't let you be happy in that house. You don't deserve it. My brother always had it going for him. Good paying job, wife, and I had nothing. And when I finally got on my feet, his wife came to knock me off. It's not too late to make a life for yourself, but you'll have some serious atonement to do. I won't go to court no matter how many times they summon me. I wouldn't be so sure. Claire, I want you to get it right. Don't ever come near me and my new husband again. Barging in like that to ruin our dinner rehearsal with your pitiful statements? What good did you think will come out of it? You ruined my life. Everything my son left me, you stole away. You were hungry for money. I wanted to show your so-called friends the real you. You only managed to be escorted to your lousy studio by the police. And you're getting a fine too. But how do you know that the location of the party? Have you been spying on me? Oh, please. I have better things to do than play stupid spying games. Then why did you even bother to come uninvited to my rehearsal dinner? Anyway, be prepared to receive an invoice for the wine bottles and glasses you broke. What? You can't expect me to pay for those. Your guests were the ones who dropped them. After you scared everyone with your shouting and chaotic behavior, don't worry. I'm sure your daughter will help you pay the invoice. Your irony is in bad taste. I don't understand what my son saw in you at all. I tell you what, a woman able to support herself? I always gained my own money in the relationship and we paid for everything together. He offered a down payment for the house, but I paid the mortgage. You witch. You wanted to kick us out the whole time, didn't you? Eventually, but I would have helped you buy a new place. Only if you didn't treat me like garbage. Now, stay away from my house and my family. I mean it. If you come near us again, I'll have you arrested. You're not going to get off that easy after what you've done to us. After that, Claire had other failed attempts to ruin our wedding. So I asked for a restraining order. In the end, she left us alone. 
because she was too busy trying to pay the rent on that shabby apartment. Shortly after, because she was poor, she ended up living in an old people's home paid for by the state. I never saw her again. Emily was sentenced to five years behind bars because of the share she stole from her brother. The shared money was redistributed to me and Jake, and with them, we finished the mortgage payment and refurbished the house to become a lovely home. Jake and I finally got married, and I could move on from my grief. I know this is what Daniel would have wished for me. I just wanted to ask one question. If your mother-in-law did everything in her power to destroy you, would you still pity her and let her live in your house?